and I am calling this meeting. I called the charter already earlier, and I will, instead of uh, resigning the pledge tonight, I'm going to ask everybody to pause for just a moment to remember and think about the veterans who have served the United States um, in the past, those who are gone and those who are still alive, those who may have been injured and so forth. So tomorrow's Veterans Day, let us remember them with just a few moments of silence. Thank you to all, and thank you to all those in our town of Michigan Shores and everywhere else who have been involved uh, somehow in our United States uh, Armed Services. Uh, roll call, please. Joan, would you like to do that? I sure would. President Diana Dumbries. Here. Vice President Michael Martinez. She incognito. Michael Martinez, we need you to unmute. Michael Martinez, please unmute. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can now. Okay. Okay, you are present. Uh, Pam Doobie. Evidently, she's absent because you asked about her, too. Yes. Mike Lancioni. Here. Rich Young. Here. Myself, I'm here. Uh, let's see what else we have. <clears throat> Laura Nirenberg, our attorney. Yes, I'm here, John. Thank you. Uh, Fire Chief Gary Bendix. Absent. He sent a report. Okay. Uh, Police Chief Bob Sokowski. I do not see him here. He did get an invitation. Okay. Park Board President Dolly Millick. She's evidently absent too. Yes. Uh, BZA President Matt Bowen. I'm sure he's absent. Absent. I think he's yes. attended. Building Commissioner Steve Thomas. Building Commissioner just notified me a few minutes ago that he is still working and cannot attend. He sent me a uh, list of permits applied for. Okay. And Ray Dumbrey is absent. He did give me a report. Okay, from the LaPorte County? Uh, from the uh, floodplain. DNR floodplain administrator, because that's what he's doing. Okay. Uh, Plan Commission President Howard Javon? Absent. On all these reports that you're getting, would you kindly forward them to me in an email, please? Yes, absolutely. Nida? Yes. Shouldn't our new uh, code enforcer be on the list yes. of roll call? Oh, she really should. Thank you very much for uh, uh, making note of that, Rich. Dolly. I'm Dolly. I mean, uh, Dinah. Yes. I sent her or I gave her a copy of how to get on to the meeting tonight because she said she wanted to be on. Yes. D Deborah, Deborah is on. Okay. So Deborah is here. Okay. Yes. I love you. Okay. I don't know if you heard Joan, but she is here. Yeah, I heard her. Thanks. Okay. Hey, Dolly is here. Dolly is with you? Joan wasn't uh, at the office. She wasn't. No. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Dolly and uh, Pam are here. Oh, they're both there. Okay, thank you. Where's Joan? Where's here? At my house. Oh, okay. Came there because Joan wasn't at the office. No, I wasn't. I decided to do it from my house tonight. Oh, you okay. didn't tell me. Well, I didn't hear from anybody. All right. Well, thank you very much. You're there now, so let's move I'm on. I'm glad with that our, you are. Uh, well, meeting. Um, the uh, meeting agenda was distributed to all town council members, and it was posted on the website. Council members, now, could you please uh, let me know if you are 
uh, in favor of the agenda as it has been proposed, or if you have something to add or subtract. Well, well if you were sitting there, were you going to- Town council members? I'll sit on one of these. It's fine to me. No updates, Diana. No updates? Mike, you're good? I'm good. Rich, anything to add to the agenda? Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I need a motion to accept the minutes. Not the minutes, the agenda, I'm sorry. You two are the important I'll move to accept as presented. Okay, that is Mike Lancioni. Okay, I was meeting here. Was that Mike Lancioni? Sure. Okay, please identify yourselves by name and please make sure that you are speaking closely to your mic. There were spots on the recording where it was very faint, so let's make sure we're all speaking loudly. Okay, Mike Lancioni, move. Second. I'll second it. Thank you, Rich. Rich Young has seconded the adopting the meeting agenda as presented. All in favor? Uh, I will ask Michael Martinez. Make a motion to accept the minutes. No, we've got them. We've got a motion. I'm just asking you if you accept. So, Michael Martinez. Yes or no? Aye. Okay, Mike Lancioni. Aye. Rich Young. What are we voting on? We're just accepting our agenda right now. Pam. Okay, aye. Okay, Pam. Hi, I'm here. All right. Thank you. All aye. right. I say aye, so we all accept the agenda as presented. Uh, let's move on to the minutes of the last town council meeting, which took place October 20th, 2020, at the town hall. Um, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes that Joan sent out to us this afternoon? On the minutes, I didn't get Ralph's comments until after everything was done. I'm going to have to add them, but I do have a comment on his his comment. Okay. You have it listed on the website that information is on Gateway concerning our budget. It's been posted on the town um, side door and it also gets posted in the local newspaper. I don't know what else we can do without sending them out to each individual person. Well, I think that personally, I think that's we've already provided sources for people to find it. I don't think we need to send this out to everyone. I don't know well, what everybody else I, I, I agree. I don't, uh, there, I mean, People that are full time here, I mean, they've got several avenues. They, if nothing else, they can stop and look at it on the front door, you know, of the office. True. And I left it there. I haven't moved it. It's, it's still there. Well, then you want to sit down. We can't start talking. Uh, well, that, then, I. Would anybody else have any thoughts to add to what Joan just said? Well, it won't go into meeting minutes. All right, fine. Well, we're not going to worry about that then. Okay. All right. Now, this Ralph's, um, this Ralph's note. Okay. I'll add that to it. All right. Excellent. To the sign. Yes. To the one you have to sign. Okay. I have someone coming in, I believe, here. Did someone try to come into the meeting just now? I thought I saw someone. Okay. Um, anyway, okay. Um, so I need someone to move if no one else has corrections or additions to the minutes. I do. You do, Rich. Please go ahead. Yeah. Well, under lease pickup, when we, um, Joan, when you wrote that the motion was made and to uh, choose that uh, signature lines, I did not second it because I voted against it. Well, who did? Anybody who remembers. I, that's interesting because that's what I have. So does anybody know? I do. Yeah, I agree with Rich. This is Michael Martinez. Okay, I don't want someone to agree with him. I want to, to someone to tell me who was the one that seconded it. Yeah, that's what you mean. I think it was, that I don't know. I don't want to speculate. Well, Pam wasn't there. It that had to be the other Michael Mike. Michael Martinez made the motion to accept. Right. All right. If Michael made the motion, then I seconded it. 
Yeah, I remember okay. that. Two peas in a pod there, okay. Or two mics. <laughs> okay, and then I believe it was three eyes. It was one uh, abstention. Okay. Or, I don't remember, Rich, if you actually abstained or if you said no. I, I voted no. Okay. So one no. And Pam was one not there. One nay. Okay, guys. All right. Any more additions? Of course, on the tape, I'm on the recording. They didn't identify who they were. I was going by uh, voice. Yes, and that's why that. I'm asking everyone today to please identify yourselves when you speak. So that's say this right. is Mike, this is Thank Michael, you. and so forth. Thank you. Any more corrections? I don't have any. Let's okay, come. everybody else is okay? Yes. All right, then I need a motion to accept the minutes as corrected. So moved, Rich Young. Okay, so Rich Young moved to accept the minutes. I need a second. Michael Martinez seconded. Michael Martinez seconded. Rich Young has moved to accept the minutes. Michael Martinez has seconded. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye when I call your names. Michael Martinez. Aye. Mike Lancioni. Aye. Rich Young. Aye. Pam Juby. Aye. And Diane, I agree. Aye. So five eyes have it. Thank five you. nothing. All right. Uh, we will move on to reports from committees, officers, and the clerk treasurer. And under this, we have only the clerk treasurer presenting her reports and claims. Joan? Uh, yes. So let's start with the <coughs> September additional vouchers. Every one of you have a copy of it. <coughs> On Nibsco, street lights, thirty four ninety four, heat for the garage, fifty six seventy one, garage electric, thirty four dollars, J A T and T, hundred and sixty two dollars and eighty four cents, uh, access for Port County, five hundred for having the uh, meetings listed on the internet. In news dispatch, that was for the bar, BZA, STR, use variance slash petition, whichever way you want to call it, $203.50. News dispatch for Michigan Rentals, LLC, the same thing for the use variance for 19 angle, and that was $311.50. Office credit, uh, depot for office equipment. Most of this was for uh, masks and the thermometers, $80.57. And Comcast for our internet for September, $89.89 for a total of $1,473.75. I have a question to Rich Young. Go ahead. When you list these, uh, the short-term rental use variants, that's what we have to put in the paper? Correct. And how much do these people pay to get these variances? I think that's going to be covered later in the meeting. I think that's going to be underneath the plan commission. <clears throat> I'm not the plan commission, but the BZA. All right. But they only, would they only pay right now $150. This does not include the postage that we have to pay because we have to send them by uh, return receipt mail. Well, I yeah, think maybe we can charge more than one hundred fifty dollars for the permit by law in Indiana. That's all we can charge. That is correct. That's all we can charge right now. And that's all we can charge by state law, unless you're going to put it under something else. 
Where does it say in the state law we can only charge 150? In the short-term rental uh, state uh, law that was passed in. Uh, Where does it? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. In the short-term rental law that was passed. Who passed it? The state. State of Indiana. Set out all the guidelines for municipalities and what you can and can't do. Can you send that to me? Yeah, 36. Oh, Laura Nirenberg. Sorry, Laura Nirenberg. It's IC 36124. I'm looking for the provision. Diana? Yes. I know that when we've had variance hearings, you know, general variance hearings, the people are charged for all the letters that be have to be sent out yes. to their their neighbors. I mean, right. maybe we can incorporate yes. it like. But see, now that's two different things, Rich. The BZA charges $150 for the petition process to get the special use permit. What the town charges, the other $150, is for the permitting process that takes place after they have gotten their variance. Correct. So these are two different things. One is for the BZA charges, and the other one is for the town council in the permitting and enforcing and so forth. The BZA could charge more, but but for the short-term rental permit, we can't charge more. Well, that, that's what I'm, I'm getting talking at. about the BZA. I thought we were talking about the BZA. I thought you were talking about the permit. I know, it's too bad it's the same thing. Well, I brought up that this is the town shouldn't be stuck with $300 advertising bill. I think there's something in there that says the fee for filing is 150 and the expenses for mailing and advertising can be done directly to the whoever's, you know, the one that's Apply. Access, wanting a permit. Well, that's something I think the town should look into because, you know, there's five hundred dollars from just two of those, and we got that's three. Right. We paid over five hundred dollars just to put the ordinance in the paper. All right. Well, I make a motion that we approve the extra payment additional vouchers for September, $1,473.75. I'll second it. Pam Doobie. I should know. I didn't yeah. know my <laughs> I didn't know your voice. Okay, Joan, can you repeat what the, or Rich, Rich, you did you make the motion? I made the motion, yes. Okay, can you please repeat the motion to make sure Joan has it? That we accept the uh, vouchers, the additional September vouchers in the okay. amount of 1400 and whatever it was, $75. We got it, okay. Rich. $73.75. Rich Young has moved and Pam Doobie has seconded accepting the additional vouchers as read by Joan Lewis. All in favor, I will call. My name, Michael Martinez. Aye. Mike Lancioni? Aye. Uh, Rich Young? Aye. Pam Doobie? Aye. I vote aye. All the ayes have it to accept the vouchers as read. Okay. Okay. I have the accounts payable for November. Ms. Shanna Shores Volunteer Fire Department. $3,471, that's for the fire protection, and $105 for the rental of the hall in our office. 
town of Long Beach for police protection for November, $4,735. Republic services for our refuse for November, $3,776. Department of Water Works for water for Kincaid Park, $9.49. For the garage, another $9.49. Brenda Heckman to go back and forth for travel to the post office and to the bank, $73.08. Office Depot, this is coffee, coffee, copy paper, ink, some portfolios and miscellaneous uh, files for the uh, uh, supplies for the office, $398.45. Jim McKay, of course, Working with the software with Keystone and updating, and that was when we switched over to a new computer. That was $122.50. And working with the software, backup, and other updates, $35. And doing downloads and updates for emails, and that was $89. I'm sorry, $490. The internet. Comcast Internet was $89.89 for a grand total of $13,314.70. Plus, I have one uh, regarding our refuse billing. We had a lady overpay $67, so she's got a credit. But in the meantime, she sold the house, and I have to figure out how we're going to do this within the system. So I would like your approval of that $67 as well. Anybody there? Yes, we're all here. Yeah, we're listening. She was well approved. She moved out, and we over $67 is what I understand, though, right? Michael, what did you say? No, I'm just confirming what she said. We owe her $67. She overpaid. She's moved no longer a residence. I say cut her a check for 67 and let's move on. Any other comments? We normally don't have this happen. We're lucky we get them all paid. Couldn't the new owners uh, pay us? We haven't been there. Any other comments from the other council members? Just pay the 67, I agree. Return. All right. So Michael Martinez has moved. Manessas, can I take that as a motion, Michael? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, so what are you Martinez. voting on? I'm Wait a sorry, are John, you just what? voting on the $67 or the vouchers plus the $67? Ah. I was voting. I was voting on Michael Martinez was voting on the sixty-seven dollars. That was overpaid. Uh, no. okay. Can't we combine them, Mike? Yes, you can combine them. As far as I'm concerned. All right, Michael Martinez moved to pay the sixty-seven dollars, but not the vouchers. Correct. With or without right. the vouchers? If we can combine them, this is Michael Martinez, then let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so they're all together. Yes. I make a move motion to approve the, the vouchers and the overpayment. Michael Martinez. Okay. All right, I need a second. Don't move. Rich Young Rich has that. All right, all in favor, indicate by saying aye when I call your name, Michael Martinez. Aye. Mike Lancioni? Aye. Uh, Rich Young? Aye. Pam Doobie? Aye. Dinah? Aye. The ayes have it. The payment of the vouchers and the overpayment have been approved. Thank you, Joan. Was there something? Okay, now, this, let me make sure I have this right. Michael Martinez made the motion and Rich Young seconded? Yep. That okay. is correct. Okay. I have one more 
a couple more items here. One is Ian Steele had sent in his $150 and his request for a BZA special use um, petition. He has sent sent me a letter stating that, and you all have a copy of it, that he's selling the house and he wants the $150 back. What do you want done on that? What has taken place in the past on anything like this or has this ever happened? Never happened. That was short term. Yeah, it was short term, wasn't it? Yeah. All right, now my question would be this. Do you know if the BCA actually expended any expense on his application? The only expense we have is the, our processing in, in the office. And it was this, you know, brought up also um, at the BZA meeting, the last BZA meeting. All right, so, can, well then, because you were at both, can you say, was there an expense involved with this, with his, uh, the initiative? Did I spend any money? No, but I spent time and, you know, I spent um, my time that I should be doing something else. Okay, well, but that's also, you know, part of the expense. Or at least I would think. Anybody else? What, what well, I, I don't know. Uh, I, it says in the BZA that there's no refunds. And I put that in my memo to you also. Yes. She did. So you've had plenty of time to think about it. If you don't, I, I mean, all you have to do is say yes or no. Thank you, but let's see what the others say. Thank you, John, for explaining that. So now... Michael, Michael, Rich, Pam, your thoughts? It is non-refundable, and that is in, in language that every uh, short-term rental, um, what do you call it, submitter has read and agreed to, right? That's what I, I have no idea, don't. because of some of these did not have any, you know, I, they said they didn't know how to file or didn't know what they had to provide. Uh, we spent hours on this, telling them where to go to get it and look for it, and reach. they still come back to us. Okay, and excuse me, Michael, this was specifically for the BZA, uh, starting mm -hmm. the petition, not the short-term rental. This is the petition for very right. for the, for the petition. permit. So, right. any other thoughts, Mike Lancioni, Rich? Um, Ian Steele used to be an officer, president actually, of the town. He, okay. Um, he had several rentals. Uh, I'll go with the majority. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, probably am prejudiced against the guy. Well, you know. Uh, if if it uh, if it says clearly, I don't have that document in front of me now. The BZA, any kind of a document that would tell me anything. So I don't know what it says. With your, you're telling us, Joan, that it said uh, that it is non-refundable. So that would Correct. make it pretty clear that we don't do anything. Uh, and if we want to feel generous, perhaps we charge a twenty-five dollar fee or something like this for the initial any kind of paperwork that you did and send back the remainder. Any thoughts on this from anybody else? Well, he did have the this for Chung. He did have the house up for sale, obviously. So, oh, you know. he, uh huh? You mean when he applied? I don't know. Probably. No. It says in your memo that he just you know he received within a few days the offer. Mm -hmm. And people just don't come out of the blue and offer you money unless you're selling. He shouldn't have uh, applied for this thing yet. And but I do give him credit for applying. Okay. Mike Lancioni, any thoughts on your part? I don't know. It's, it's like, you know, just, let's just 
If it's non-refundable, it's non-refundable. Just keep this move on. One hundred and fifty dollars. Not that big of a deal. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a motion. So I need a motion from somebody. To refuse them that. Well, if it says no refund, no refund, I uh, make that motion. All right. So Rich Young moves. Uh, to notify no. Mr. Steele that because it said it is non-refundable, he not receive a check. Your question is all time. This is Mike. I'll second. Okay, Rich Young moved. Mike Lancioni seconded. All in favor? Michael Martinez. Aye. Mike Lancioni. Aye. Pam Duby. Aye. And Rich Young? Aye. Okay, Dinah Dumbris, aye. The ayes have it. We will send Mr. Steele a letter informing him that it was a non-refundable fee. Thank you. Okay, let's repeat who made the motion and who seconded it. Yes, Rich, Rich Young made the motion. Okay. Mike Lencioni seconded. Okay, and then it's all in favor. Yeah, all in favor. Yes. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Joan. Uh, are we done with your reports? Got one more issue. Okay. Um, I'm supposed to let the council know when people request duplicate doc. I mean, uh, copies of documents. And I received another one from Tim Foley for the Plan Commission. On September 1st, he wants the plan commission meeting minutes. He doesn't want just what I have. He needs it signed. And he's asked for, um, today he asked for a request for the meeting agenda for tonight, which has been posted on the internet, our web page. And I did get one late this afternoon. An email from him said he went to the website and got it and I already had sent it to him. Okay. And I think that just about does it. Um, the only thing I liked your comment about the veterans, um, I'm a family, I'm part of a family that was very, how should I say, um, patriotic, especially during World War II. My father's four brothers served in World War II. And I have a brother who has made the Air Force his career. John again. So I'm very proud of the family and of any other vet who has served military, no matter where, when it was and where it was. They, they really deserve more than a thank you. Thank you very much. I will second that. Ray is a veteran over here, United States Navy officer during Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Okay, back on to other business. Thank you. Resolutions and ordinances. Let us uh, move on to the ordinance for leaf pickup services for the town. Uh, Attorney Laura Nirenberg sent this document out to the town council members late this afternoon. It was just a corrected document that she sent out. And with uh, all the information listed on it, it is our uh, resolution 2020-06 townwide curbside leap and stick pickup. Um, at this point, uh, Laura, well, no, no, uh, well, yeah, I am asking Laura and perhaps even Joan. Our next step now would be with regards to the resolution. We got all kinds of cans. <laughs> Rich, are you saying something? No. I was oh, okay. talking to the girl. All right. Laura? Where'd you go? I've lost Laura. Okay. Just a minute. <laughs> okay, Laura, are you back? Not yet? No? Wouldn't she take a body break? Yeah. 
All right, I don't know where Laura is. All right, Joan, is our next uh, step then a reading of this resolution for us to be able to pass it at this, to approve it at this meeting? You have it as an ordinance? It's, well, I listed it, I think, on uh, an ordinance there, but we have it listed as also as a resolution 2020-06. Uh, I think it's not an ordinance. I'm not sure. Pardon? Wait a minute. There are two different issues. The ordinance for the leaf pickup service for the town. That is an ordinance 2020-06. Okay. A resolution is for the proposed leaf pickup fee, and it just so happens it is the same number. Oh, they okay. Both, all the ones above them are filled, and I fill them as I go down. And then the refuse and the garbage collection ordinance is 2020-07. And then you have your uh, or, uh, salary ordinance, and that should be 2020-05. Okay, I am looking for yeah. a So I actually pulled up the resolution regarding the fee at this point and not the ordinance. Okay, in my hands. Um, did you, do we all have the ordinance 2020-06? Yes, yeah, when I sent it out, Dana, this is Laura Nirenberg. When I sent it out, it, did, it was not numbered at the time. Joan numbered it after it was sent out. But I, okay. I think it was sent yesterday. Uh, so again, it just the ordinance 2020 dash and it's blank. But this was housekeeping that uh, Mr. Gunning did for us. He was working on this for a while and he finally got this to us. As you'll remember, we were pulling from a 1981 um, ordinance and then we had another resolution. So this just brought it all together and updated it. Okay, so, so I'm really grateful he this, this to us. Resolution huh? 2020 dash 06, just to be clear. Is, is encompassing both what would be the ordinance 202006 and the resolution for the fee? No, the ordinance 2020-06 is, is a standalone. It is the ordinance that okay. authorizes the town to do garbage and refuse. Thank you. The resolution 202006 is specific to the user fee because that's subject to change. So we aren't gonna put that in the ordinance itself. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What was that? Power. Okay. All right. So now I, I actually looked at this one. Now, does everybody have the ordinance document at hand? Hey, Dinah, I'm losing. I just lost my power. Oh. You got power. We might not be here, huh? Yeah, a lot of us may not be here. So I can look at my phone, though, so we can proceed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Can any? Does anyone have their ordinance for the leaf removal nearby to look at? Yeah, my leaf. Yeah, we did it at the last meeting. We approved the leaf pickup, but we didn't pass the ordinance. Well, I don't have a copy. I'm sure Pam does. I don't. It was in the last month. I'm looking for the um, the the that document as well. Okay, I can I can track it down. Well, if my internet would work. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it won't even let me off the resolution. Well, pickup was supposed to be this week, wasn't it? I don't know. Mine is already. Yeah. Mine are out there. It's in that one letter. Yeah. I sent it Sunday um, after I spoke with Jeffrey, so it was probably. About six o'clock. Let me try this other computer, see if this one works, Dinah. I am sorry. Okay, no, 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 no problem. It's us too. I thought that I had everything here in one. This is not well, okay. it was in the letter. Yeah. November. Oh, you didn't lose power right now? November 8th. I had my, lead, or my stuff out there. 
Yeah. <laughs> now the generator's kicking on. It's not helping me. <laughs> oh, dear. Dinah, you didn't lose power? No, I'm still on. No, oh, we're out. I'm on the generator now. Oh, are you? Oh, well, we don't have a generator. My lights are still on. And if my lights go out, <laughs> adios amigos, okay? Because I don't have a generator. Yeah, we have some big We just flashes. lost power on El Porto, but it's not our side. It's the west side. Oh. Okay, I've got my fingers crossed. I've got my ankles crossed here. And we'll hope it's okay. I am sorry that, you know, uh, that we're doing this, but I am not finding. I thought that we had combined it into the one since all I remember seeing was something named the uh, LEAF uh, resolution. Yeah, yeah. Okay, where's Laura? Laura, Laura. Just slow motion. Mm -hmm. You want something to drink? No, I'm fine. Okay, I think this is it. November 9. I'm on my phone now. Okay, I sent it to Dino, Muscle, Pam, Mike, and Rich. Attached it. Okay, I'm going to just resend it again. Okay. So it'll be at the top of your, it'll be at the top of your feed here. Okay, very good. Oh, there we go. I found the ordinance now. Okay. Okay, now, now I have a caveat because the problem is that I have since altered the language in the resolution that you just re you, you received about at 650 or yeah about right. 650 yes. today yes so that one's different i mean the the math is close to the yeah. same but it is right. a little bit different didn't hear my gun that one can be that one had okay a note or something so at this point now, because I'm hearing other voices in the background, so I began with the resolution, but we should go back to the ordinance first. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. This is over well, again. We should just start with the, with, the, with the housekeeping that is the ordinance. We can get that established, get that voted on, and then okay. we can move to the resolution to discuss the user fee because Joan might have some additional comments about that. Okay, so now we need to do, uh, for this ordinance, we're going to need to do one reading and then we can vote to omit the second reading. Is that a question? Our phone number. I think we got lost somewhere in there. No. Those the only three that have a copy of this ordinance. Yeah. But three will carry the hope. So did we lose Dinah? No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Okay. I am here. So yes, um, we can we can um, actually vote on this, and if we have four people vote in favor of it, then it should be approved for one reading. And again, this is just housekeeping. This is compiled okay. all of those other documents that I referenced right. earlier. Okay. Do you recommend that we actually read through this out loud, or can we just vote on it now? Pam and I don't have a copy of it. All right, so we're going to have to read through it very quickly. Laura, do you want to read it or do you want me to read it? No, I'll be glad to. Okay, thank you. Um, whereas the town of Michigan Shores has been granted the power needed for the effective operation of government as to local affairs pursuant to Indiana Code 36132 and may exercise power for the benefit of public health, safety, welfare, and morals of the community. And whereas the General Assembly of the State of Indiana allows a local unit of government to enter into contract pursuant to IC 36147 to fulfill its purposes and policies, and whereas the town is given authority to adopt, enforce, and codify ordinances pursuant to IC 361-4-11, and whereas the town council has determined that it is in the best interest of the town to provide for the public health, safety, and welfare of the community, and provide a healthy environment to the town of Michigan Shores and having adopted a ban on open burning, and then it slides to the town code 3-1-6-2, including yard waste, the council finds it necessary to provide a town-wide community curbside leaf pickup service to dispose of the abundance of leaves our area produces. 
Now, therefore, be it ordained, adopted, approved, and enacted by the Town Council of the Town of Michigan assures the following provisions for curbside leaf pickup. Section 1, whenever the Town Council determines it shall provide curbside leaf collection to the citizens of the town, it must designate the properties to be served. Upon the Council's determination, the service must be operated as follows. A, service shall be provided by contracting with an outside contractor. B, the charge for the service will be fixed by the Town Council for the services rendered. The charge shall be billed separately or itemized so that it is identified as being for the charge for leaf pickup service. C, the method of payment for these charges shall be made based on billing from clerk treasurer's office and payment to the town shall be made to the clerk treasurer of the town. D, penalties shall be assessed in the amount of 10% for late payments. E, revenue shall be based on the amount reasonably related to the cost of providing this service, including billing and collection costs and other administrative costs in time of the clerk treasurer's office and town attorney. Accounting shall be so that documentation will be provided so as to comply with all statutes and regulations. Okay. Section 3, repealing of conflicting provisions, the provisions of any or all other ordinances, resolution, or town code provisions in conflict with the provisions hereof are of no further force or effect and hereby suspended and repealed. Section 4, severability provision, if any part of the ordinance shall be held invalid, such part shall be deemed severable and in, in validity thereof shall not affect the remaining parts of the ordinance. Section 5, an emergency enactment clause. The town council hereby declares an emergency that exists for the immediate taking effect of the provisions of this ordinance that it shall become and may remain in full force and effect immediately following its passage and adoption by the town council and is otherwise provided for by the law. And then we just go on all of which is ordained, adopted and enacted on this day. Let me, let me make one more point because I, I don't want to confuse anybody. When I was speaking about the ordinance being a housekeeping, I was speaking specifically to the garbage and refuse. I hope I made that clear. Okay. Okay. This is the, this or, ordinance came about because of the decision to move forward with the leaf collection. Okay. Which is something that I've been talking about for months. Just okay. wanted to just wanted to make certain I didn't confuse anybody. Thank you. Okay. Uh, are there any questions from council members with regards to the ordinance as it was read to us by Laura? No. No con. Okay. Then in that case, uh, do we not need Laura a motion uh, to uh, omit the second reading and to accept it as after the first reading? Sure. <laughs> I mean, isn't that yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Officially. You can, you can do that. All right. So I need someone to make a motion that we uh, that we accept the ordinance as read and omit the second reading. This is Mike. So moved. All right. I need a second. Michael Martinez second. Okay. Thank you. All right, Joan, did you get this? Joan still on? Oh, I think we've lost Joan too. Okay. All right. And yes, this is being recorded, so we should be good. All right. So Michael uh, Lancioni moved. And is it Rich? Did you second or Michael Martinez? No, Mike Martinez. Okay, Michael Martinez seconded the motion to accept the. Um, I want to say this the correct way here, to accept uh, Ordinance 2020-06, an ordinance providing for curbside leaf pickup, leaf collection for the town of Michiana Shores, and to omit the second reading of the, or and to, I forgot what the correct word is to say that we're omitting that second reading. Um, you may have to correct the legal term for us then on that, Laura, on what we call that. Um, so. All in favor, I will ask by roll call, Michael um, Martinez. Aye. Mike Lancioni. Aye. Rich Young. Aye, I guess. Pam Doobie. Aye. Okay, Diana Dumbris, aye. The ayes have it. All voted in favor of accepting ordinance 2020-06 regarding the curbside leaf pickup for the town of Michiana Shores. Thank you all. 
Now we move into the resolution regarding the fees that are involved with lead pickup for the town of Michiana Shores. This is resolution 2020-06 and everyone should have received it from Laura this afternoon sometime after five o'clock. Do any, and I understand that uh, Rich has not seen it probably and Pam has not seen it. So we will have to do a read through on this ordinance as well so they would hear it. Uh, Laura, do you mind reading it or do you want someone else? Yeah, no, no I, I would be glad to. It, it encompasses a lot of what I just read, but somewhat okay. different. So let me start okay, well, from the let's beginning. Be, let's be official. Okay. You ready? Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. Whereas the town council of the town of Michigan Shores maintains ordinances and resolutions in a town in in its that that's a typo town municipal code here and after referred to as the code and is not a criminal code. And whereas in the interest of providing a healthy environment in the town of Michigan Shores and having adopted a ban on open burning town code 3162, including yard waste, the council finds it necessary to provide a town wide community curbside leaf and stick pickup service to dispose of the abundance of leaves on our, our area produces. And whereas it is unlawful to place collected leaves without an owner's permission on property not owned by the party removing leaves from their property. And whereas the cost of this service cannot be derived from the general fund of Michigan Shores, so it will be necessary to collect a user fee from each owner of improved property. Now, therefore, it is hereby or ordained and enacted by the town council, the town of Michigan Shores in Fort County, Indiana, as follows. There is hereby established a town-wide curbside lease and stick collection user fee for residents dwelling units. The user fee is set in the amount of $107, and said fee determined by dividing equally between the number of improved property in Michigan Shores. Postage and administrative costs are included in the user fee. The town-wide curbside leaf and stick collection user fee shall be billed and collected as part of the biannual refuse billing system of the town of Michiana Shores. A penalty fee shall be assessed in the amount of 10% for late payments. Severability clause, if any section clause provision or portion of this resolution is deemed to be invalid or unconstitutional by a court of competent jurisdiction, such provision shall not affect any other section clause provision or portion of this ordinance. Emergency enactment effective clause. The town council hereby declares that an emergency exists for an immediate taking effect of the provision set forth in this resolution so that it shall become and remain in full force and effect immediately following its passage and adoption by the town council of the town of Michigan Shores, County of LaPorte, Indiana, or as thereafter is provided by law. Effective date, the terms of this resolution are retroactive to October 1 of 2020. All right. So any questions or any comments on the resolution? Okay, hearing none, I will ask for a motion to accept resolution 202006 to approve it uh, for the townwide curbside leaf and stick pickup. This is my to so approve the, to approve the fees for the curbside leaf and stick pickup. Let me be precise. Mike Lancioni moved. Who seconds? Michael Martinez second. Michael Martinez seconds, thank you. Rich, did you have a comment to make? No, I just said I seconded. Oh, but we did, I didn't hear your voice, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I heard Michael's, but not yours. Okay, all in favor of resolution 2020-06 for curb, town-wide curbside leaf and pickup fee. Uh, Michael Martinez. Aye. Pam Doobie. Aye. Mike Lancioni. Aye. Rich Young. Aye. Diana Dumbris, aye. The ayes have it. Passed five nothing. Uh, I thank you all for this. And Laura, thank you for reading through and preparing, obviously, these documents for us. Oh, um, okay. I, I'm pleased to do so, Diana. I did find a typo, so I'm going to send you a new version. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, typos, typo, typo is small. Now, I believe that Joan had also sent us the refuse and garbage, or is that also under your documents, the refuse and garbage collection ordinance? Yes, it should be under, yeah, that should be under mine. And this one is uh, ordinance number 2020-07. Okay, 
dash zero seven. Yes. Did you want me to read this one too, Dinah? I think that what we have to do is read through them to make sure that any anybody who may not have seen it, Rich and Pam, have you seen this document? No, but it's all it's doing is combining the the seventy dollar fee and the fifty dollar fee, then I don't need to hear it. All right, this is basically, what is it? It provides for the garbage and refuse collection. So we're basically just um, repeating the same ordinance pretty much that we've had in the past. Is that correct, Laura? I to some degree, yeah. It just sets the foundation authorizing the town to do it and updates all of those documents, Rich. Right. So no, this isn't gonna reflect the fee that's reflected in another document that I don't have access to right now. Okay. But yes, this is just pulling all those older documents together. But it does essentially say the same thing and it tacks on to uh, your current code 422-20, the garbage okay. refuge system. Okay. All right. Do I have any questions or comments from uh, members of the town council on ordinance 2020-07, an ordinance providing for garbage and refuse collection for the town of Michiana Shores, Indiana? Hearing nothing, I will ask for a motion to approve ordinance 2020-07 having heard an explanation of what the ordinance is doing regarding garbage and refuse collection. Oh, that has a typo in it too. Okay. Um, any? Are you yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My council members, they need a motion. So moved, Rich Young. Okay, Rich Young moves to accept uh, ordinance 2020-07 regarding the, uh, the uh, garbage and refuse collection. I need a second. Oh, yeah. This is Mike, I'll start it. Okay, Mike Lancioni seconds. Uh, roll call vote to um, to approve. Uh, Michael Martinez. Aye. Pam Juby. Aye. Mike Lancioni. Aye. Okay. Uh, Rich Young. Aye. Diana Dumbris, aye. The ayes have it. Uh, Town Council has approved uh, Ordinance 2020-07, an ordinance providing for garbage and refuse collection for the Town of Michiana Shores. Thank you. Hmm. Now, I know that Joan meant, here we go, I've lost him. Oh, there he is, he's back again. Uh, Okay, now I don't think we have Joan back on our screen. She's not on again. Um, I don't know if I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to call her on her cell phone and see what's going on with her. Um, I know that she was going, think that she was going to mention something else at this point, but I'm right now. I'm not sure she didn't change the agenda. There's just a bunch of people with power out there. Yeah, I do. I, I understand that, but because we are recording this. Um, I think that we're going to keep going with our meeting, you know, so. Yeah, you can get her on your phone, Dinah. She could listen in that way, might be able to interject her thoughts that I'm way. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to reach her right now. You want to post with the internet. Pardon? Well, I don't know. See, if she's lost her power, she's lost it, but she may be able to be, um, join us just on her phone, her cell phone. Cell phone, okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I need to connect with her. Just give me a second. I don't have her, I'm looking it up in my, whoops. <laughs> I'm trying to get her off my contact list. Oh, He's the boss. He's the boss. This doesn't seem to bother him. He doesn't know any different. No. Okay, so on the chair again. Okay, try to sneak out all the time. 
She can listen in on us now, and I would like everyone to uh, keep it quiet on your end while, um, so Joan could hear what's going on. So I just asked Joan about the uh, salary ordinance, which is a part of the budget we just passed, but we do have questions with regards to the approval for Deb Chubb, as well as for, um, for uh, paying Jean Paxton for the work that she has done for the BCA. Uh, what they have now, or what's going to be in twenty twenty one? Well, what they have now. What are we going to do now to ensure them that's getting paid? Nothing to do with the salary ordinance. Okay. If all right. Pass the salary ordinance. That's all it is. You cannot add anything to it now. Okay. That has to be done through a resolution or a uh, an ordinance. Okay. So. And I suggested to Laura that we could do that, and I think I mentioned it to you also. I think I don't know how many other people were on that email. That uh, it can be done after the first of the year. We can do it after the first of the year as an amendment to the salary ordinance. For what's going on now, mm -hmm. all I need is something to tell me these people are going to be working in their hourly rate. All right. So, okay, so you need us to provide a document authorizing you to pay Deborah Chubb and Jean Paxton for the work that they are currently doing. Am I right? Please tell me yes or no. Uh, yes. Uh huh. And I'm still confused about paying. He is a member of the BZA. And for a to attend meetings and get paid, and, and the other people don't get paid, other board members don't get paid, does not seem fair. Um, I think that part of this began, and I will explain this to the, everybody listening. Jean has been doing additional extra paperwork that is outside of the scope of the regular recording of the minutes at their meetings. I believe what we can do is the thought was to begin with to offer Jean the extra pay for the extra work that she is doing outside of the recording secretary's work. If the BZA so feels or pleases the BZA may be able to make a recommendation to us with regards to paying her and deciding which things she gets paid for, whether her participation in the meeting and recording during the meeting should also be paid or whether it's only the paperwork. Okay, I don't know that we as the town, we can approve it, but perhaps the BZA should make that suggestion. However, I have just by word of mouth that Matt Bowen agreed that Jane should be paid for the extra work that she was doing for the BZA currently. Right, because the BZA um, secretary did not get paid for 
Yes, and Jean has for the heading for the regular meeting. I understand, and Jean has no expectations of requesting a yearly salary or anything like that acting as a secretary. It is only because it is over and above the work that the BZA secretary usually has to do. It is a voluntary position for her. So, you know, she is, it's over and above what she does. So this is just a small remuneration for the extra effort that she's putting into this. So I will now ask the town council to make a motion to approve the extra pay that Jean is getting. And we can leave it up to the BZA to determine how, uh, for what specific other items they may want to pay her, whether they want to pay her for recording at the meetings, let them make a recommendation. We can approve it later on. Thoughts from any of the council members, please. Well, I kind of agree that Sir Chung with Joan, none of the other members get paid. None of the other uh, members are doing the paperwork. The Jean is doing the extra work. No, but they're doing the work that they have to go out and check in the community to find out what these houses look like, how, where the parking space is. They have to go out and serve, kind of survey every one of these homes and come back with a report for them to make a decision based on what the applicant is saying in their request. You have some work involved in it. It's not just sitting there the night of a hearing and deciding based on what the applicant is saying. Okay. Then I will repeat again. Okay, I heard what Rich said. Michael, and I won't repeat anything. I'm sorry. I'm going to listen to what Mike and Michael may have to add or Pam to the to the discussion. Gentlemen, madam. So we're not voting today, Joan. Just to be clear, I'm sorry. Um, it's just more recommendations. There's more work that needs to be done. Um, some research on whether or not we should pay her. Am I right? Did I hear that correct? Joan, is, Joan did you hear what Michael said? Part of it. We, Can you repeat that, Michael? I said, we're not voting on anything tonight. It's more of us doing our due diligence to figure out, you know, uh, you know, how do you say, if other people are getting paid additional salary or funds for additional work, uh, we need to identify that as well. Did I hear that correctly, June? Yeah, it, it doesn't seem fair to me to pay Deb. Not, not Deb. I mean, uh, Jean, the okay. Even for the hearing because the other members, board members, are not getting paid. Okay. And the president is not getting paid any extra. Okay, I'm going to interrupt at this point. Okay, thank you for the information that you gave us on that, Joan. Um, but just to make it clear, Jean is a regular voting member of the BZA, so she also has to go out and look and do all those other things, as do the other BZA board members. The only one of the BZA that does get a salary is Matt Bowen because he is the president of the BZA and he gets a small salary for the, for the year. Uh, the others do not. So Jean acts just like the rest of the BZA. However, Jean does the paperwork that is involved with these new BZA petitions that the others do not do. So it adds extra hours for her to do. So the others would not get paid for the work that Jean does. So my suggestion then is to pay Jean for the extra work that she has done and then throw it back to the BZA to discuss amongst themselves whether or not they feel that they need something extra, whether Jean should be paid for various different kinds of things and what they think that amount then should be. In addition to that, then they may have to, and this is another thought, they may have to revisit the fees that are being charged by the BCA because we're not sure that, I think from the conversations I've had is the BCA uh, fees do not cover all the expenses that are involved currently with all the publications and notices 
that need to be generated with regards to uh, somebody requesting that special use permit or variance. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to call them. So anyway, just again to make it clear, to, to give her to, to pay Jean back for the extra work she has done over and above what she has to do as a regular BZA member. How do you separate her taking a minute at a meeting or a hearing versus because there's paperwork, there's more to a hearing than just a regular meeting. So how do you separate that that's going to be extra work and the other isn't going to be extra work? I was talking about the preparatory paperwork that gets done. The research she's that she's even, doing and other she's not, doing, she's not even doing all the preparatory work. I understood from what, okay, but Joan, I understood from the suggestions you had made when all of this started was that the BCA secretary should handle all of that work. But she is not doing that work. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I do have a timesheet from her. Okay. Why don't you come in and look at it and tell me what you think she ought to be paid? Well, I'll be happy to take a look at it and, and to see all, what all of it says. Uh, any other thoughts from Mike Lancioni or from Pam Doody? I think we should pay that compensation uh, as appropriate. Uh, I don't really have a, uh, any issue with it. Yes, the recommendation was for $12 an hour for the extra work that she had done. Um, I still... $12. Up with the $12. Well, Joan, you gave us a range of $10 to $12. I did not come up with that. And then I suggested the $12. So, uh, and, and the okay. town council could vote on that. Uh, but I would like to then, yeah, I mean, we'll have to take a look at, the, at, at what her hours were. I'm not sure how many hours she submitted. And because uh, I haven't seen those. This was just a thought with regards to that because she is doing more. And Jane says she did not expect a salary of any kind as the plan commission secretary gets. So now my suggestion only at this point was, is if, if we cannot agree on this right now, to make a motion that we uh, put this off until the next meeting, at which time we will have had time to look at the timesheet and make a better recommendation and then get to the BZA to pass along some of their thoughts on this as well. Does anybody agree with this? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you know, but at some point, I mean, we're gonna, we're spending more time and money than, than, than the whole than the whole amount we're gonna pay out. I'm ready to just give somebody cash out of my own pocket just to move on from this issue. <laughs> well, okay, well, but it was brought up now, so I just want to finish it up. So I, I made a motion that, I mean, then that we We've been this talking on. about this for a half hour sure. now. This is ridiculous. Thank you, Mike. I thought this was going to be a very easy thing to just take care of. I didn't realize that we would go through a long discussion on this. So um, I am tabling this until the next month, until we have more information collected on this. With regards to Deb Chubb, who has started working on short-term rental notices being sent yeah. out to people, how do we handle Deb Chubb's payment then? Do we need to approve something right now for her to get paid for the work she's doing now. Um, this is my opinion, I'm going to state this now, is that it is very important for us to get these letters out to these people so that they would start, especially those where we know that they have been violating our short-term rental you know, uh, requirement. And then sending out warning letters to everyone we suspect of doing this. So I would like this to get started and not wait until January for this work. We had no intention of waiting to 2021 to hire her. Any motion from anybody? 
I'll move that we go ahead and compensate Deb uh, per the hourly rate that we agreed uh, immediately. Okay. I need a second. Michael Martinez seconds. Okay, Michael Martinez seconds. Mike Lancioni moved. Michael Martinez seconded to comp to approve compensation for Deborah Chubb for the work she is doing already with regards to uh, notices and notifications to short-term rental permit uh, violations. All in favor, please vote by indicating aye. Michael Martinez. Aye. Okay, Mike Lancioni. Aye. Rich Young. Aye. Uh, Pam Doobie. Aye. Diana Dumbras, aye. The ayes have it. We have approved paying Deborah Chubb for the work she is doing uh, on the short-term rental uh, violation letters. Thank you very much to everybody. Uh, Juan. Diana? Yes. Diana? Yes, yes please. This is Rich Young. How much? We're paying her $25 an hour. Correct. Well, at the last meeting, I brought up that if we're paying her $25 an hour, then our other hourly rate people, the road maintenance, I think should go up to $25. They've well, been doing it for decades. Then they may have been overpaid for decades, too. I'm not sure. I'm being a little bit facetious right now. However, we have only this on with regards to the current payment. They are already being paid. These people are working, but they have not been paid yet. We can pick that up and we can discuss that. Then I know we tabled it from last time, but I'm going to move that on to the next meeting because we aren't prepared for that. And we still have other reports we should get through tonight. So... My suggestion is the table. I'm sorry. Yes, Joan. I I sent the uh, budget in July. I told everyone I was working on the budget. Where were they when they thought that somebody else should get more money or a raise or whatever? I never heard anything from anybody. Um, Joan, you were very well aware that we were looking for a code enforcement person for months. Right. But I couldn't put anything in the budget because I didn't know what amount you were going to pay her until it was all over with. So just recently, it went to $25 an hour. It was less. It was, it was 20, Joan, it was 22 to 25, and we gave her the $25 because of her qualifications. Right, I understand that. But what I'm saying is I couldn't get it in the budget. That's why I notify everybody that the budget is being done so that you can get your two cents in the budget as to what you want in there, not just wages, but everything else. New paving, no road paving, whatever you want to do. And I will accept that we had... Uh, but let's move on to something else. Yes going nowhere. Yes, thank you very much. All right, so we have approved that part. Now let us move on to a quick run through on the departmental reports. Bob Solkowski uh, has sent, has not sent me anything. I didn't hear get anything from him. Dinah, Dinah can I interrupt you for yes, a minute? Please. Are we, are we going to um, do the salary ordinance that Joan sent us tonight? Well, Joan? I was asking Joan about that. Joan, what about that ordinance you sent to us? If you don't pass it, we'll do it. I'm sorry, Joan? We, can't change, we cannot change the salaries next year. We can amend it to add people to it, but the salary, like for the clerk, um, the treasurer, the uh, consul, those are all set the year before. Okay, so the salary ordinance, so going back to that, the salary. The way it is right now, after the first of the year, you, we can do an amendment to add Deb and to add um, anything else. Okay, so Laura, does that make sense then? Well, you know, I understand that. Joan was very clear about that in an email. But so are you saying, Joan, that we don't have to pass this ordinance 2020-05 tonight? 
Uh, I apologize. I thought it was on the agenda I, for a reason. I would pass an ordinance showing that Deb's being hired and Gene is being hired. Okay. Does everybody have a copy of that ordinance to hand? Is this among the no. ordinances? No. No. no, the, the one I'm looking at, 2005, is just a salary ordinance, a continuing ordinance to authorize compensation rates and salaries. Yes, okay. I, I, I apologize for my confusion. I was under the impression because it was listed on the agenda that it was something that was going to be voted on tonight. I apologize. Okay, all right. So then we, what we should do is we should make a motion that we pay. We've already made the motion to pay Deb and we passed it and approved it tonight, correct? Correct. All right, and it looks like we have put off the ordinance as pertaining to Gene Paxton. True? Okay, I believe that that's yes. we put it off until next month. So, Correct. So Correct, Dinah. We have currently taken care of Deb Chubbs, and we have put off the one with regards to, uh, to Jean Paxton for next month. Um, let us then please move on to the next items. Thank you for the reminder, the Laura. Um, as I start yeah. anything about the 2021 salary ordinance, are you going to pass that tonight? Or I thought you said it was already passed as a part of the uh, the budget. Part of the budget. In part of doing the budget, there's another page, or the 49th page. Okay. That we have to do what they call a salary ordinance. Okay. That makes it effective for 2021. Okay. All right. So, and that is uh, ordinance number 2025, a continuing ordinance to authorize compensation rates and salaries for the town of Michiana Shores, Indiana for calendar year 2021. Uh, and it reads, it has all the whereases uh, included and says, now therefore it is hereby ordained and enacted by the town council of the town of Michiana Shores, Laporte, Indiana, uh, the existing compensation rates and salaries for the employees, officials, and servants of the town of Michiana Shores, Laporte County, Indiana, as follows. The existing compensation rates and salaries for the employees, officials, and servants of the town of Michiana Shore shall continue at the most recently enacted budgeted amounts, levels, and rates for the year 2021 and beyond, or until modified or amended by official action under law. 2021 budget rates. Uh, town Council President 2,500, Town Council Members 2,000, Clerk Treasurer 11,975, Clerk Treasurer Refuse 750, Building Commissioner 5,000, BZA Chair $550, uh, Road Commissioner 550, Park and Recreation Chair 550, Plan Commission Chair 550, Plan Commission Secretary 750, Road Maintenance $20 per hour, Part time Office $6,000, Refuse clerk three thousand uh, dollars. Repeal provision. All prior ordinances, resolutions, or parts thereof, inconsistent with any of the provisions of this ordinance, are hereby repealed. Severability clause says if any action, a section, clause, provision, or portion of this ordinance be deemed to be invalid or constitutional by a court of competent jurisdiction, such provisions shall not affect any other section, clause, provision, or portion of this ordinance. Emergency enactment and, and uh, I, I'm not sure of that word, at this clause. Uh, the council hereby declares an emergency of this ordinance shall be in full and effect form and after its passage and adoption by the town council of Michiana, town county, I mean, Michiana Shores County of LaPorte, Indiana is thereafter as provided by law. Passed and adopted by the majority vote of the council on this 10th day of November, 2021. All right, do I have a motion to accept the ordinance as read? This is Mike, so moved. Michael Lancioni has moved to accept this ordinance. I need a second. Michael Martinez seconds. Michael Martinez seconds the ordinance uh, to accept uh, the ordinance 2020-05 as read. All in favor, uh, vote aye. Michael Martinez? Aye. Uh, Mike Lancioni? Aye. Uh, Pam Doody? Aye. Uh, Dinah Dumbris? Aye. Uh, the, I, I didn't miss anyone, did I? Five yeah, up? Yeah. I'm sorry? Rich. Oh, Rich Young, I'm sorry. Rich Young? 
Well, I, I'm going to abstain because I still think that $20 should be changed. Okay, so we have four to approve it. Uh, we need, Joan said we need something to go forward. This doesn't mean something can't be changed. This means that we are approving that there are budgets, that we have a budget for, for salaries. So we have four approvals, one abstention, and zero nays. All right? Why did he abstain? Because we didn't address the $20 per hour for the road maintenance. Okay. Discussion for later. Uh, yes, this is um, now uh, we we passed this ordinance. I did not include asking whether or not we needed a second reading for this. Laura, I think you do. All right. Yeah, I, this one wasn't structured for that, Diana. I apologize. I no, this one came from Joan. I didn't plan this one, so okay. I'm not really familiar with it. All right, so then we believe, I think, on this kind of an ordinance as well, we can uh, vote to omit the second reading and approve it as it stands. No, I'm not certain you can. Oh, all right. Okay, Joan says we could just redo this again in the December. It will be fun. Pardon? All right, so this is what we will do. We have passed it on the first reading. This will go for a second reading in December. Thank you all. And I wanna go back and I will be speaking quickly now as I say this faster than I usually do. Um, I did not get a report from uh, the police chief with regards to anything to report. Uh, Fire Chief Gary Bendix did send a report. I will share that with everybody and omit reading it right now. Building Commissioner Steve Thomas also uh, sent me a short list of permits that had been issued. I will forward that to everybody. Uh, Dolly Millick, do you have anything particular to say about the park board? Well, I'd like to congratulate Rich because he got a lot of beautiful comments about his work in the, on the trail and now he's got it all removed, don't you? <laughs> yeah. So Thank you very much, job. Dolly, and you're, you're absolutely correct. Rich does an awesome job, and everybody really gets to benefit from it. Thank you very much, Rich. Nice job, Rich. Okay. Uh, road commissioner is not, obviously, we don't have anything from the road commissioner right now, so we know nothing if he's planning on any kind of uh, patching. Uh, mm -hmm. Pardon? Uh, awesome. Plan commission... Uh, uh, there's a, I do have a short report here from the plan commission. I don't know if you want to go through it. Many of you are on the plan commission and may not even need to look at it. Uh, the rules and procedures are being looked at. There's a discussion of duplicate homes and an ordinance is being worked on with regards to that. Uh, the new home at 424 Dreamwald is, uh, uh, there's C. Wilson is filing an application for a building permit. The Breezeway carport request a 36 mile poncho train was denied and they have been sent to the BCA. And uh, there is an accessory structure and setback. Code language is being reviewed and revised for the uh, ordinance that this pertains to by Mike Lancioni. That is all from the plan commission. Um, BCA, pardon, that's a report. Could you send me these reports? Yes, absolutely. You, yes, you'll get everything. I'm just going to be flying through them so we don't have to do a lot. That's all right. Go ahead. Okay. All right. White Ditch, there's nothing for us, uh, for us particularly. Uh, I made a report that there are trees in the areas where the drainage board has to remove them from, and I know that they've already contacted McWolf, I believe, about removing it. Uh, one gentleman did approach a um, uh, the installation of a pool in his yard and that is down near the banks of the ditch but the ditch uh, and the drainage board as far as they are concerned approved it uh meaning um they he had to sign a uh I, I forgot the name of the deed now he had to sign so that he wouldn't claim any kind of damage in case they had to come through and do something uh that does not mean okay. they gave they did not give him permission to build the pool they just said they will not do anything and he he has to sign off in case something happens when they have to clean the ditch. Okay, a oh. question. Yes. Question. Did they go before the DNR to see if it was okay? I, he's, I, don't, I don't know yet. Joan, he hasn't come to us yet. Okay, so I'm just reporting what to... This just took place at drainage today. We have nothing, uh, you know, no decisions are made about anything yet, okay? Okay. Is anything that, that 
Yes. 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 We're we're aware of that too. You know, except that I'm just I just reported what happened at the drainage board today. Um, okay. Moving on uh, to the next. Was there a question about the drainage board? Okay. Uh, moving on very quickly. Uh, website. I'm uh, going to let you know that Samantha Arnold has uh, has uh, volunteered to uh, post and work on things for the website, which is an awesome aid to all of us. So kudos. Pardon? Pardon? Okay. Uh, so that's just news for you on website. She's helping work on that. Uh, nothing new from Nerpsy. There will be a meeting on the 14th of this month for a full commission meeting via Zoom. Uh, LaPorte County COVID-19 meetings keep taking place. Cases and hospitalizations in Indiana are increasing. People are going back on ventilators. Uh, recommendations are to follow safety guidelines, masks, hand washing, social distancing. Uh, the testing, there is testing available currently near us at the CVS at Carwick, and they're setting up station to be at Lighthouse Place. As long as you have insurance, you will be paying nothing, and then if you show that you do not cannot afford it, you don't have to pay anything then either. Um, that is for that. And then Ray, Ray submitted a plan for, I mean, not a plan, a flood plan administrator's report. He attended two virtual workshops put on by the DNR, and I will I can send you the titles of those workshops. That have, they're very long ones, and I'll send you the titles on the two workshops that he attended on the benefit for the benefit of the uh, the DNR's flood plan administrator. Um, I think. Let's see what other kind of reports. I'm still flying. All right, we still have some things called. Um, are there any new STR permits that needed to be signed? No. Okay, thank you. Road signs and roadside trimming, nothing from, I don't think, we can't talk to the chief, he's not here. Um, removing the tree at El Portal, has, has anybody heard? Uh, Rich, have you heard whether he's planning on taking down the tree by the fire, by the garage? Who's he? I, Bobby Slokowski, I thought he was taking down a tree by. He was I don't know anything. Yeah. Oh. oh, he's going to get quotes. Okay, well, I, I, as I said, I have no report from him, so I don't know. And he did get warning. He did get news about our meeting. He knows it took place, but he may have been busy. Um, okay, uh, police contract. Any words on police contract, Michael? No, I just sent an email uh, probably a couple hours before. I think there's some chatter going back and forth regarding that. I mean, is this, uh, you know, I gave my feedback, so just looking to the town council based on the contract that I had um, to Laura's point, there really was anything outstanding or a huge miss. Um, it was just more broad terms of what is satisfactory um, and then what is, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, daily uh, patrolling, I guess you could say. So those are more broad terms, but again, nothing too much. I know uh, we talked via email about as we move forward, if we might just uh, are still waiting for a Michigan City Police Department, which I believe, Dinah, you are taking the lead on just to see exactly what the expenses might be as another option. Okay, yeah, we'll just find out what they say in, in case because yeah, nothing was happening in the, in the mayor's office, but then I talked to one of the administrators in there and they said, you know what, don't even start here, go down to the police and see if they're even interested. And if they are, they're gonna push it through to the town to get approval you know through the city anyway uh, that's it for the for this thank you very much on that very quickly um, I had included under new business something about unsafe houses we have another correspondence from Michael Coleman who uh, has been writing to us about the cabin at 3845 he's been in touch with us over the last year or more this is a neighbor's house on Michiana Drive and it is owned by Colin Marshall the gentleman who also has the rental at 3811, or, no, I don't remember for sure the number, I don't wanna lie, on uh, Manawa, Mano, Manawa, what? Okay, I'm sorry, it's at the corner of Pontiac and Man, 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 Manawa, Manawa, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, yeah. thank you, Joan. So anyway, um, uh, this home is really, I will forward the letter that he has sent to you, but I think we need to start moving and doing something officially, legally, and maybe having something sent out by Laura with regards to that house, the 3845 Michiana Drive. It's got holes in its roof. It had siding that was falling off. It had the uh, stuffing coming out, the, uh, you know, the insulation coming out. He came, he, 
he boarded all that up. Then he came back another time and took off some of those boards and brought it back, those boards over, those, you know, log looking boards, took those over to the other house he owns to fix that one and then left this one with the flat boards in front. The place is looking like a real mess. So um, I am, I will forward the letter I just got from Michael Coleman this afternoon to all of you to read it uh, and to you as well, Laura, because I think that we need to start doing something about this and not putting this off now, now that we have, you know, we, we can do something. I know we have an ordinance. It may not be the most up to date. They might be something we need to look at, but, uh, but I think we should do something with this. Um, and then there was, um, I, Laura may have, um, an attorney's report for us. I, I had nothing specific, but I did receive an email from Jeffrey. I think it's worth reporting on the Eureka, is that how you pronounce it, yes. matter? Okay, okay. So, uh, so good. Um, excuse me. Pardon me? Laura, uh, did he send that yeah. for, for uh, public, for, um, public uh, recording? Because this is being recorded. I understand that, but I, okay. I did think okay. that he wanted me to say something about Well, well anyway, okay. it's very, there's going to be a... a okay, business. thank you. So, just a, just a very brief update, but thank you for that, Dinah. Yes, based on our conversation, he did want me to let people know. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so did we miss something? Are you going to report? Oh, that that was it. That they're right. they're moving okay. forward with the joint dismissal. That's that's okay. all that there is to report. Yeah, I think everybody is um, just moving forward from that. So okay. that's that's good. Buddy Eureka is holding out, thinking he's going to get money from the town. Uh, uh, Laura just reported really? that Mr. Gunning, uh, Jeffrey Gunning, reported to her that he has gotten a correspondence uh, regarding the Eureka matter. So thank you very much for letting us know that. <laughs> You're welcome. He, he has gotten a correspondence regarding the Eureka matter. Okay, but that's all that the report is about right now, that he has gotten correspondence and he will report on it to us as he moves forward. Thank you, Laura. Um, now, miscellaneous business, I don't know if anybody wants to add anything. Um, communications, I received a letter from Dick McGill regarding the fireworks in the town. And then I regard it, I, uh, and you already heard about this deteriorating house. That was the other correspondence that I received. Uh, but I, I brought up the correspond the unsafe house kind of issue as a topic that we do need to address. Complaining about them. Okay. So I just sent that off to you guys. Every, every council member will have gotten that now, and including Joan and Laura from Michael Coleman, so you would have that for your records. Um, Thank you. So uh, right now, I have nothing else. I don't even know for sure. Do we have any public left, you know, at our meeting? I think we have one more number. Colin Foy, I think it is. I'm not sure. And um, I think we are getting pretty late. But if there's someone in the public that wants to make a comment, go ahead. Any comments? Move on. Okay, no comments. So I'm going to move on. Council comment. Council member. Any any council member comments? No. Okay. Um, and then because if we have no other comments, I am going to ask for someone to move to adjourn. Uh, did I hear someone say something? No, I'll make a mo This is Michael Martinez. I'll make a okay. motion to adjourn. All right, thank you. And I am adjourning this so that those who are without power can get back to their uh, taking care of all their other business. Anything we can finish, we can finish um, going at the at our next meeting. Please jot your thoughts down so that we can include it on our agenda. Do some research if there's stuff that needs to be researched. So I am adjourning the meeting today at 8.43 p.m. I thank everybody for participating and being patient uh, and sitting there in the dark while you do this, okay? So thank you. Good night to all. Bye. Thanks, Diana. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.